good? All the time. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. It's amazing how people got, try to change God, you know. You can't change him. <laughs> He's the same and nothing going to change him. Praise you, Lord. But we are in a time and season of a great transition. We are leaving this reality, entering a new one. Many people will miss it. They'll stay stuck in this reality, still bound to the things of this world. And 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 1, He says, now the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? <laughs> yes. Some will depart from the faith. Faith. We've talked about the faith, and there's the power in faith. Amen? So they're going to depart from the power of walking in faith. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. Well, a deceiving spirit is not a righteous spirit. That's why it's called a deceiving spirit. Amen? It's an evil and wicked spirit, deceiving people. That means their voice is deceiving people. And doctrines of demons, things that people, you know, all of a sudden they, they pick up another type of information. Well, one of the things that's released in doctrines of demons is the media. That's a doctrine of demon. They, anything that's a lie is a doctrine of demon. Amen? Speaking lies and hypocrisies. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, there's something very important about the conscience. There is the voice of conscience. Everyone say voice of conscience. So what he's saying when, this, when the, their conscience was seared with a high, uh, hot iron and needs was se sealed so that God's voice could no longer speak to them. See, you and I were born with a conscience. I'm not going to get all in depth scientifically and all this stuff. But every human being on this planet has a conscience. At least you'd hope so, anyway. Sometimes it seems like they don't, but... But when a conscience is seared, it's a, that's why you always wonder, what the, how can that person be doing what they're doing? Well, what about their conscience? See, because the conscience is the only thing that connects to the voice of God. And see, but people have come to that place where they're willing to sever that voice. It's sealed, it's blocked. The conscience is also known as the voice of reasoning. In other words, where God is reasoning with you. Now, the enemy likes to reason with you. Amen. But this is where God is reasoning with you, with you and I and, and his children. He reasons with them. What is he doing? He's trying to explain to them certain things. Why do you want to do this? Do you think that what you're doing pleases me? It's reasoning. That's the conscience that speaks to us. But he says that in the latter days, their conscience is going to be severed. They will not listen to the voice of God. Forbidding to marry correctly. And commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. What they are doing is they are muting the voice of conscience, rejecting the voice of God, or the reasoning of God. There no longer is a submission to God, replacing it with the reasoning of the voice of the enemy, with self-justification. And all of this is the influence of darkness. Remember, anything that influences darkness is always trying to bring you in a blind state of being. That's what backsliding is. It's putting, putting a person into a, a blind state of being where they're not hearing clearly. It doesn't have to, a, a conscience doesn't have to be severed. Amen? But it can be dulled. It can be diluted and contaminated. In Romans 9 and verse 1, Exposure of wickedness and deception can restore the conscience, the voice of conscience, if a person chooses to accept and repent and turn their ways. Amen? 
one of the things that begins to interfere with your the voice of conscience is fear. Fear is the number one thing. Where there's fear, there's no faith. Where there's fear, there's no faith. Romans 9, verse 1, let's speak it. I tell the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness with the, with the Holy Spirit. That I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, the promises, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternally blessed God. Amen. The conscience bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. It is the righteous voice of reason and awareness. Reason and what? Awareness. Again, it is the only divine sense. Your conscience is a divine sense of God attached to humanity until full submission to the voice of the Lord. See, because your conscience is always there. But then there's a place where you begin to have relationship in the fullness of God's voice, knowing that it's not just his voice you're looking for. It's the impression of all things. See, everything, God can speak to anything. He can speak through anything. There could be a bumper on the front of a car. He can speak to you. Amen? There's all kinds of things. that can, there's, There might be things you, that your conscience, the voice of reasoning, reasoning, and God's trying to speak to you, and all of a sudden you're at a red light, and this truck comes by and says, repent and try again. It's like, oh, snap. You know, whatever it may be, get back to church, get to whatever it is. God can speak to us in any way he wants to get our attention. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. See, the voice of the enemy always tries to reason why we shouldn't get reconnected again with God or do the right thing before God. That's the enemy's voice. But the voice of God reasons and lays the scales and weights and, so, and his, this is where the questions come from God. We're, we're, why are you doing this? Who told you that? <laughs> Amen. In verse 1, let's speak it. God who at various times and in various ways, in other words, he can speak any time, any way he wants, right? Spoke in time past to the fathers by prophets. He speaks today by prophets also. Has in these last days spoken to us to by his son and his son's spirit, known as the Holy Spirit, whom he has appointed heir in all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, and having become much more better than angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Various times, various ways, prophets, dreams, visions. How about events and chaos as God speaks to us? Amen? Through his word, and now through his spirit. And what do we just say? That his spirit witnesses with our conscience. Spirit witness with our spirit. Things that pertain or reflect the voice of God's sayings. Again, we are in a time right now where we must be so aware, so alert, so consistent. When people are not consistent, their voice begins to fade away. It's just like anything else. Consistency is really a key to maintaining in everything. It takes discipline to be consistent, amen? But if there's something behind that consistency, determination and commitment, amen? Determination and commitment. How committed are you and how determined are you to be a pleaser of God instead of a pleaser of self? In Psalm 3, verse 1.
Lord talks about things that he's saying, you've been bewitched. How can you start so well and not, and where'd you go? Were you not led by the Spirit? Now you're led by the flesh. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who what? Rise up against me. Many are they who say to me, there is no help for him in God. This is the enemy bringing reasoning to you. But you, O oh Lord, are, my, are a shield for me, my glory in the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and sleep. I woke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O oh Lord, save me, O oh my God, for you have struck all of my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. <laughs> he protects, one of our responsibilities is protecting the voice of conscience. Amen? We are protecting the voice of reason, the voice of truth. These are the promises of God that we need to protect in everything we do. We must maintain them, be connected, from living from the promises of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless geologies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is to love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless, the insubordinate, the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, for the profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, about the murderers of babies, children, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, many have turned to corruptible voices and seared their conscience, their conscience connection to righteousness. They have fallen astray to the works of the flesh and not the works of the spirit anymore. This is why we're in the end times. We're seeing the battle right now between two voices. The voice of righteousness and the voice of corruption all over the world. James chapter 3. Information is what turns people from one direction to another. If, if information will lie and people believe the lie, they go to, to the left. If it's righteous and truth, they go to the right. Hallelujah. James 3, verse 13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Let me share something with you. Bitterness and self-seeking will block the conscience voice of God. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, now think about this. Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Why? Is that going to sear a conscience? You betcha. It will block that conscience big time. It will block the voice of God to what? What reconciles everything is repentance and humility. Because the blood must always be activated and go first. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. 
than peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The Bible says those who are peacemakers so see God. Things that block the voice of righteousness dull its sense of reason, self-seeking, bitterness, unforgiveness. These things dull it. In Psalm 29, verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian and like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Right now the voice of the Lord is shaking the earth. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadash. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people, and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Those are his promises. This is the voice of the Lord. Again, we must protect the voice of the Lord. How do we protect the voice of the Lord? By not getting caught up in bitterness and unforgiveness, self-seeking, pride, and all the other things that begin to nullify that voice of reasoning from the conscience of God. Amen? Avoid those things. In Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, or that word want means lack. You won't lack nothing. If he's your shepherd. Now, if he's your shepherd, then you know he's the one that leads you. Amen. It's when you lead yourself that you're no longer, he's not your, he's not your shepherd anymore. And you're not a part of his flock or his sheep. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. It just said his voice is over the waters, over still waters, right? The Bible says, be still, know that he is the Lord. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Why? Because you have an open communication with his voice, and you know he's right with you. For you are with me, he said. You see. Your rod and your staff shall comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Wow. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. No fear when the voice of righteousness is with you. There is no fear. John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered him, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. Man, that is such a witness. In other words, when somebody's in a backslidden condition and so forth, and their conscience is being dull and come corrupted or whatever, and it's hard to, in other words, that person doesn't hear. I, I can tell you I have counsel with many people that all of a sudden that veil comes. Vroom. And you know what? That conscience has been severed right there from the enemy, and they can't receive correction. They just can't get it. They won't receive it because they've opened the door to the enemy. Has not only brought that veil then, but severed their conscience to the voice of righteousness. 
My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Believe me, when you get into a place and you can't receive counsel, counsel correction or direction, you better be very careful. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That's a sheep. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. I love it. Then how, do enemies, how does the enemy snatch people out of uh, the hands of the Lord? Because they've not his sheep anymore. They've allowed that severance or that searing or dullness of consciousness. They're not listening to the voice of their shepherd. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Again, the sheep know his voice and they follow him. The reason why they get snatched out of the hand of the Lord's hand is because they're not his sheep. First Kings chapter 19. Thank God for his mercies and grace where people can repent and get reconnected. And, but again, we must protect that. That's our responsibility to protect the voice of God. Hallelujah. In verse 11, 19, 11. Then the Lord said, Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he went out and stood in, in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> Hello. Elijah was totally mistaken. Amen. I mean, here the dude does all of his wonderful works. Jezebel releases a word, and he freaks out. Whoa! And runs. So God had to speak to him. But he got his attention, didn't he? Earthquake, fire, this, that, whatever. And then a still, small voice. Sometimes God will just come in the still, small voice. And sometimes he'll come, and that's why he likes to visit us in dreams and visions. But most of the time when God speaks to us, it's impressed, impressed, impressed. That's why as you learn his nature, you'll know what God's saying without a voice. Does everybody get it? That's maturing. It's walking with the Lord. You'll know. You don't have to ask, Jesus, Lord, is that you? You'll know. Amen? Still small voice of conscience. James chapter 4, verse 6. The Lord says, he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud. Believe me, being prideful. But he gives grace to the humble. In other words, that's God's plan. Well, how are you going to hear? <laughs> you got to be humble. Amen? You won't hear if you're prideful. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to resist. Amen? Again, these are areas that the enemy tries to come and cause us to nullify, block, the flow of the voice of God. I'm going to close at Ephesians 5, verse 14. We must be aware of things that are offensive to God and that will nullify his voice to flow through your conscience. You don't have to wake up uh, get you know, be awake and or get wait for God's get get your attention while you're in jail or in bed dying or whatever, amen. <laughs> that's I, I'm, I'm telling you, many people that's how he's got to get their attention. Okay, that was the first thing I I share with someone when they were sick. I said, God, and I knew they were out of 
out of God's will. I said, does God have your attention now? They said, yes. I said, good, now we can start from there. Ephesians 5. But you don't have to wait to get to there. Stay aware. Be consistent. Be alert. Know the nature of God. Take time with him. Fellowship with him. And whatever you do, stay in fellowship with other believers. Not those that are planting corruptible seeds. Stay away from the prideful. Hang out with the humble. Those are full of faith. Amen? Ephesians 5.14, please. Let's speak it. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine in which dissipation, but be filled with the what? Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And submitting to one another in the fear of, of, the, fear of the Lord or fear of God. In other words, that's respecting one another. Amen. Disrespect will definitely begin. It starts a path of severing that voice. Where it's our responsibility to protect that voice, that open channel to the Lord. Amen. Listen, God knows what, you're, what we're doing behind closed doors. You know whether you're manipulating, cheating, lying, or, or you know, whatever. You know whether you're, what you're doing is displeasing to God. You know. But don't let it get to that place where your set, your conscience is seared. Because you'll go right into darkness. Amen? A warning from the Lord and preparation for the good things to come. Because he rewards who those who diligently seek him. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that we be protected. Everything that's been spoken to today will be protected by the blood and sealed by the Holy Spirit. And bring to remembrance that we may be more aware, more alert, and more consistent with a clear conscience in Jesus' name. Anybody say